On today's instalment of I'll never be able to fly because it's raining and windy again, we're going to look at this, which is the Matic One flight controller. Stay tuned. Right, so this is the Matic F, um, F411 One flight controller. And this is the stuff you get with it. So you've got a capacitor, a capacitor which is a 35 volt 470 uf capacitor you get six gummies which obviously mount in the holes and act as soft mounts um, and the board itself looks really really high quality um, it weighs 10 grams um, and it looks really really well built and just quickly looking at it it's got a really simple layout so you've got obviously your esc plus and minus at each corner and your signal wise at each corner if you're using separate ESCs and if you're using a 4-in-1 ESC we well, would simply use the plus and minus here and the actual board layout is really simple so you've got 5 volt ground signal 1, signal 2, signal 3, signal 4 you've got your VTX and CAM ports and VBATs here and along this rail here you've got ground 5 volt LED transmit 2, receive 2, transmit 1 and receive one ground and five bolt um, and obviously you've got your current sensor which is rated to I think 189 amps or thereabouts and the PDB that's built in is rated um, basically 30 amps on each um, ESC connector so um, 120 amps in total um, continuous current um, but the board itself is rated for 2 to 6S, so you'll have to be giving it some to, um, to, to cause it any issues. But the real um, perk or the star of the show is it's using the new Betaflight SPI receiver protocol. So built into this little guy, we've essentially got um, an FR Sky receiver capable of giving full RSSI and telemetry. And it does that um, basically on D8 and D16 of the non-EU firmware and D8 on the EU firmware um, and it also supports um, scripts um, on the non-EU firmware but not on the EU firmware so as I bought my um, QX7 from Banggood I've always run mine on the non-EU firmware and the reason for that is when I buy receivers it tends to be cheaper to buy them when I'm grabbing other things from Banggood um, now and again I get them from the UK but I just flash them to the non-EU um, non firmware um, so this is really going to be a suck it and see for me the pro of this is this flight controller um, is the same price pretty much as the um, CL Racing F4S that I was going to purchase before I stumbled across uh, this so it's saving you know 10 or 12 quid um, just in buying a separate receiver and obviously having your, your receiver built in means that you save some space if you're, if you're building something particularly tight. The quirk of this is um, there's been a lot of talk about how slow protocol SBOS, SBOS is and the fact that it needs to be inverted and the issues that that causes on F4 flight controllers and the fact that FlySky is a faster protocol than FR Sky and people are um, using the Crossfire system because that has lower latency. Um, because this is using SPI, um, SPI is faster than SBUS. So the, the latency should in theory, I guess, be quite a bit lower than the usual receivers that we're using. Um, I use the XM Plus because I don't tend to um, use telemetry at all. And that gives me RSSI via the Betaflight OSD, which is all I need. I don't really go in for the whole voices telling me this, that, and the other. Um, but the fact that this is all built in, um, I may use those, I may not. But it'd be interesting to, for somebody to test the actual um, latency and speed of the um, the transmission and whether it is any faster than um, the usual systems that we've been using on FR Sky for some time. I think the reason why I bought this, to be honest, is that it was the same price as an alternative without one. Generally, I get well, I always get a little bit scared when you get sort of things that are built into other things um, because the danger of you having an issue um, is much greater, in my opinion. Um, and if you do tend to sort of damaged components um, it tends to be more expensive to replace them the reason why this is kind of 
more unusual is because it's not really costing you anything more, as I said, than a standard flight controller. And I think on that basis, that's the reason why I thought I'd have a punt. It'll be interesting to see if I have any range issues. Um, on my setup, I've never had um, a fail safe um, other than once when I um, lost an antenna and didn't realise. So if I have fail safes with this, it'll be um, really interesting because it's not something I ever come across. Um, so yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see if I get the full, you know, the the full range that I'm used to. Um, but yeah, I think it's a really really good and interesting flight controller. The one downside of it is because it's using the SPI protocol. Um, that doesn't take up a UART, so the receiver built in isn't taking up any UART space, um, and you're not having to take up a UART um, for telemetry or anything like that. But the board itself still only has two UARTs, um, so which is, will still be a little bit restrictive for some people. Um, you know, I don't use Crossfire or anything like that, so I'm not particularly familiar with how many UARTs they use or the features that they need. Um, but I'm just surprised it still only has two UARTs and doesn't have three or four, which is becoming more common. Um, the one thing I do like is it doesn't have um, an SD card slot, which tends to make the boards pretty sort of thick. Um, and I like the way that this is a relatively sl slim board, albeit that the um, IPAC set antennas um, do stand somewhat proud. So you're going to have to be a little bit careful about how you mount, mount this um, just to keep these safe. If this board runs really cool, I would probably just use some um, hot glue or something over there. Um, if it runs warm, then I'd just stick some tape over the top just to keep those antennas in place because the danger with these guys or you have a bad crash um, and, um, and you lose your antennas. And because IPAC's antennas are relatively weak, the connector isn't really made for multiple um, reconnections um, you need to be a little bit careful um, and of course it may limit orientation a little bit although it doesn't look like it will do yeah so I'll keep you posted on how I get on with this when I decide what build it's going into interestingly it looks like yeah actually the one strange thing on it is even though on these boards you tend to run this part coming out of the side of the quad signal one is actually here two three and four so design wise it would be easier to to mount it with the battery wires running through your quad so I'll just bear that in mind obviously you can change these around in two minutes on beta flight so that's not an issue um, but yeah thought I'd give you a quick look at that um, nice bit of new tech Matic flight controllers seem tend to be um, pretty good um, and because this is using the 6000 gyro, um, it's not a particularly sensitive um, gyro, so there shouldn't be any issues with noise or anything on this guy. So yeah, definitely worth a look at. Um, I don't know how many reviews there are of this out there, or if anybody's been running it um, for any sort of length of time, but if you've seen anybody running it um, successfully, then let me know. Um, and vice versa, if you've seen anybody having problems with it, then I'd like to know that as well before I, um, I stick it in a quad and see what happens. But yeah, cheers guys. Thanks. Bye bye.